Yes, hello, welcome back to a second edition of Good Games presented by Funk Case, also known as GG's with Funk Case. Hello, welcome back. I am your boy, Funk Case. Of course, of course, the name is here. Um, today, we are bringing back yet another guest from uh, one of my family. Last week was uh, was the man Yax. This week, we're bringing in one of the original DPMO family, my boy, Devon, also known as... Sweet Tooth. Hello, Sweet Tooth. Yo, my dude. How's it going? <laughs> what is that, man? How's it going? How's life in uh, in Los Angeles right now? Uh, life is actually really good. Uh, we just lifted the mask mandate, so shows are back to normal. Oh, wow. We got a couple shows going, going on a week. It's like, you know. <clears throat> is the mask mandate happening. fully off now? Uh, as of right now, it's up to the individual property. So, like, if you go to a grocery store, it's up to that specific grocery store. Oh, interesting. But... Yeah, so you're allowed to not have your mask. You know, some places will be like, because I remember I, I went to a comic shop and it said, hey, you still have to wear a mask here. All right, so and it's then, optional. Yeah, it's optional. But then there are other places where it's like, yo, if you're vaccinated, like, you don't have to wear a mask. It's chill. Interesting. This, I mean, the UK is really, uh, it's quite intense here still. You still have to wear masks pretty much everywhere. Um, I don't know, which is kind of strange because we're, we're, I think we're the top vaccinated country at the moment in the, on the planet and we're apparently the worst dealing with the situation but uh it looks like america's like starting their they started everything uh a bit better now right they got a lot more vaccinations going yeah because you know there are a couple states where the pandemic actually just like never really happened yeah you know they closed down for two weeks but everywhere else you know california included because i think california had the strictest mass mandate if right. I'm correct yeah so um we got everything out we got everything out rather quickly because you know at first it was to people who were at risk older people you know people with health issues and then after they got sorted it went down to people like all right do you work in the food industry are you like a caretaker yeah and then everyone else cares yeah. but now to the point where it's like you don't even need a um uh what's it called what's the word called when you have a uh you don't need a mask vaccine no <laughs> you can decide on whatever you want i forgot i totally blanked on the words yeah yeah place. yeah yeah, weird. Well, you know what? We know what we're not going to do because we spent obviously a long time in the last, you know, two, one and a half years dealing with the, with the whole Corona issue. We're going to move on to the the man himself, Sweet Tooth. So, what is new in the world of Sweet Tooth right now? What's going on? Oh, dude, we got a bunch of tours coming up. I got my DPMO EP that I'm working on, nice. pretty much finished, as you know. Yep. Uh, now that DPMO is a label, I'm, I'm hyped to get that out there. Uh, just announced a Palladium show, which is the biggest venue in LA for like, you know, not festivals. Yeah. So I'm hyped to play that one. And then um, I believe at the end of the year, we're still headed on to Rampage. Yes, yes. The DPMO takeover at Rampage. Of course, of course. We uh, So my calendar is also filling up, which is amazing news to be spending such a long time away from America. I've played one show since... Uh, since Corona happened, and that was in Germany, in a in an arena for twenty thousand people, but actually two thousand people it was only ten percent allowed in. So yeah, it was very strange. Um, but uh, since then, no shows, and I'm coming back to to America. But it feels really nice to be getting back to shows again. I know I know you're just probably just as excited as I am, because because actually it, uh, mentioning you know not not trying to carry on the Corona train, but you actually had a, a whole massive bunch of uh, tours planned, didn't you, around around the world when Corona just yeah. happened. And it's, uh, you know, you know this better than anyone. I was actually at your house when yep. it happened. <laughs> yeah. And we were, we were supposed to go to Belgium, from England to Belgium the next day. Yeah. And then after that, I was going to go directly to Australia for an Australia, New Zealand headlining tour. Then come back to America and do a tour there. And it's like, you know. But the yeah. cool thing is I stayed busy enough during the pandemic with live streams. And, you know, like uh, I did like one drive-in. But I did enough to keep my name out there, so now that shows are coming back, I'm kind of hitting the ground running, picking yeah. up where we left off. Yeah, Our true. Yeah. Well, as the format goes in the uh, in Good Games with Funk Case, we're going to play a, a game. I was going to say a match, a game together. Uh, and today's game is Apex, which uh, if people uh, who are watching this, who are regulars in my Twitch channel, know that I don't play this very often because my aim sucks, basically. But this He's man plays a lot. This man plays a lot. So, yeah, we're going to move into that right now. And, uh, yeah. Oh, also, the word I got stuck on was appointment. <laughs> but yes. Was was yes, I know. Yeah, I, I knew there was something in that list of things. I was like, wait, mask. <laughs> which I didn't I know. I have no idea why I blinked on appointment so hard. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so let's. Uh, so you're already in it. You joined me already. Oh my god, you would be level four twenty. Uh, you would be level four twenty, wouldn't you? Are you trying not to play the game anymore so you can just end on four twenty? I'm above sixty nine, okay. so we good. <laughs> um, oh, you're so close. You're so close to 69. I know. Are you going to do some arenas? It's a little more fast paced. Oh, yeah, sure. I've never actually played arenas, so that's something different for me. So let's run it. It's kind of because uh, you're a big fan of Valorant, right? Uh, I'm a fan of Valorant, not a big fan. Big fan of Rocket Sorry, League, enough, of course. Kind of Apex's take on Valorant. <laughs> oh, really? So wait, so is it like a like a is it like a search and destroy style thing? You die and then you wait for the round to go over. Uh, more or less, like you die, you wait for the round to go over. But the more you do during the round, the more money you have for weapons the next round. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you have to like drop in with the loadout that you pick, and then you know as the rounds go on, you have more currency. Oh, so you can actually pick better. a loadout when you land. Yeah. So like oh. before the game starts, you go to a little uh, like a starting area, a spawn area, and you have I think like thirty seconds or so to pick your loadout, pick out like ba uh, health, meds, and whatnot. And yeah, that's what you go into the round with. But you start off every round fresh again, so you have to buy stuff each round. This could be terrible for me because I've never played this game mode. So I might just walk in and be like, "Uh, what am I doing? It's fine. We'll draw. We'll try our best. I'm a gamer. I know things and stuff, so it should be fine." But we, me and me and uh, me and Devon Sweet Tooth are actually on the opposite sides of the world. Almost. He's in uh, Los Angeles. I'm in the UK. So the ping difference may be a little bit aggressive. But we'll see. So your so who's your go-to when it comes to characters? Because mine's mine's Mirage, as you know. So usually for this, I pick um, Lifeline because she has the self heal or not the yeah. self heal. Like I can heal you without staying over your body. Yeah. So in uh, in arenas, that's kind of huge, you know. What about well, what about in the regular gameplay? Who do you normally play with? Regular gameplay, I'm an Octane main. Oh and are you? Octane uh... just got a huge buff recently. Faster, faster, faster! Exactly. <laughs> He's fun, actually. He's fu quite fun. I never knew who I liked in this mat in this game because, like, when I first played it, my aim was that bad. I couldn't focus in on just liking a character, you know, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't know who I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. Okay, this is new. Uh, yeah. So I just select any gun. So if you look at the bottom middle, you'll see how much currency you have. Yeah. Okay. So you have to you be within the money. Okay. That's just, yeah. That's exactly like. Okay. So we should probably get a pistol for free, right? Yeah, you get either the P2020 or the Mozambique for free. I'm going to go P20, and then I'm going to go... Oh, I do like the Spitfire, actually. I'm a Spitfire guy. Yeah, Spitfire is good. So what about, the, uh, what about the ammo? Oh, you start off with, like, a full clip. Like, oh, yeah, so it's right here. Sweet. So now we just have to go find someone. Yeah, so if you see the map, you can kind of see where the zone's going to end up, and the team oh. spawn on the opposite side. Oh, so I see. So we're most likely going to move in this little middle area right here. Yeah. Okay, and we have a random man with us, which is great news. Hopefully he's good. Oh, he's getting shot already. Twenty-four on their um, Gibraltar. Oh, there's one here. I've hit him for eighteen out of like an entire clip. I'm, I'm literally sick of this game. <laughs> You're fine. It's your first round. Bam to the boozle. He's a for 18. Gibraltar knocked again. him back again. Yeah, his armor's gone, his oh! armor's gone. Oh, she has a wingman and she's good with it. Uh oh. Hopefully no one come out, so no one else turns up. One down, nice. I'm gonna push here, I think. I've got very low on health, but you know what? I think I'll just hit the initial. So uh, there are, you, you're familiar with the supply bins, right? Like, yeah, 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 of course. There's like extra meds in there. Got, yeah, it's 2v1, y'all got this. I'm attacked. Literally can't hit him. Oh my lord, he's, he's literally nuts with the wingman. And we there win, let's go. go. I did, I did damage, no kills, but we good, we good. It's a good start, it's a good start, I'll take it. Sometimes damage is more important. <laughs> so I was going to ask you, um, the dubstep scene. Obviously, you're part of it. What is uh, what is your thoughts on the current, the current uh, outline of how it's going at the moment? Like, do you think it's bigger than ever? Do you think it's dying? What, what do you think? I think it's bigger than ever. Yeah. And there was a point where there was a lot of negatives that came with that. Yeah. Um, you know, just. 
you know, egos being there, people not being in it for the right reason, you know, people like, because to me, the thing that made the dubstep scene special and made me fall in love with it was how organic it was. You yeah. know, it felt very homegrown. And everyone that was a part of it really, like, loved being a part of it. Yeah, for sure. But with the growth of it, you have the introduction of people that really aren't there for the purest of intentions, which comes with, like, its own thing of problems. But now, after, now that things are coming back, everyone just seems really grateful to be there. Yeah, I think I think and, we're, we're about to hit a new a new style of this scene, really, like, because of the, the whole fact that everyone's been away for so long. I yeah. Think people are about to be uh, super happy to be back at shows, and people are going to start appreciating shows again people they know there's two, so there's that, well, two on me here i've just uh, done him for a good attack <laughs> so now that um that's kind of the where everyone's at the fact that dubstep is arguably one of the bigger if not biggest staples in edm it's, it's great you know like i get to tour more like i get to play bigger shows i get to help out my family doing what i love yeah um i hope they don't peak. Cause oh shit! I hope because I remember it. back in the day. Literally the worst like, shot in got... history. Literally the I'm literally the worst shot in history. Let's go. You got this. You got this. Yeah, I'm dead. But yeah, I remember. Back, I remember back oh, in the my day, aim is all wrong. Oh no, dude! My why is my sensitivity so low? What the frig? Holy moly! You can tell I haven't played this in a while. You got it. Trust my me, sensitivity it. was so low. What? That was crazy. Uh, buy menu E. Oh E. Uh, let's go to Spitfire again. P2020. They've been going snipers on those. Maybe that's something I could do as well. But The G7's a good uh, middle ground. 0 0.9. Let's see how that feels. Oh, that's really high. 0.6. Okay, that feels a little better. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's a little better. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, uh, back in the day, when, you know, when I first got into the dubstep scene, there was one dubstep show a month. A month? And a month and i remember like if you were in town if i didn't see you that night i wouldn't see you for a year it'd be a year before i yeah. got to see you again yeah true but now with where the scene's at now um there. there's there'll be three dubstep shows in my city on the same night which is just you know yeah it's, it's amazing it's, are there. super blown up the whole the whole scene kind of just went crazy it was like shows like every two weeks every three weeks and then suddenly it was like right there's someone every single day not literally but you know it's like it just kind of just blew up there was just show after show after show and now like promoters are finding it easier than ever to run shows there's like so many there's so many shows here and the cool thing too it's like now since there's um more opportunities it kind of brings people together more yeah for sure. they're not really like just some sweet gear for us you know i feel like there used to be this sort of if someone got an opportunity like oh why'd they get that and like i didn't get it you know there's just a little bit of um jealousy involved now since there's yeah, so much to go around for, <laughs> so much to go around for everyone like people are just like oh you're playing this show like even if i can't be there like i'll let people know to go to that that dude is a demon oh i did a lot of damage but i'm being uh i'm being cut this man right here. Oh, he's finishing me on my body. I'm getting on right now. <laughs> yeah, I just got destroyed. Yeah, literal demon with the wing bomb. Oh my god. Well, they quite, did quite a lot of damage on that one, but... Again, no knockdowns. Does it tell you how much damage you've done? Yeah, if you look at the top right corner, it shows your damage. They quite a bit of damage on that one, I feel like. Round lost. Uh, you know what? I might actually go sniper on this one. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot now you can have. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't realize you can buy like a whole bunch. I was like trying to throw grenades earlier. And I was like, uh, it no work. It no work. All right, here we go. Only four shots in a sniper. That's probably a good thing, honestly. Uh oh you guys going left, okay. Okay, okay. My aim on this game is so so shocking sometimes. But it's because like I haven't I'm not Ooh I lined him up pretty good. Sixty on uh Costit or Gibraltar broken. Gonna wait for him to come up again. Is this your go-to game? Is this the game you play most often these days? Or um, yes, 
and I've also been playing kind of other games too. I've been playing Knockout City a lot. Which oh, is that's like, right. Uh, yeah, you have. Yeah. A new dodgeball game. Oh no. <laughs> but it's like you know, with the state of video games, they change. Even huh? the same game will change so How do I much. Not hit? Oh my god, I pushed that way too fast. How am I not hitting these dudes? It's oh. like a game will be super awesome and then they'll release a patch note and then it's like, alright, like, this game's unplayable. Oh no, dude, I can't believe I didn't hit any of them. I wonder if there's a ping issue. What's my ping on here? Wait, how do we find out what ping is? Forget. I do not know the answer. Oh, we're on London. You have to press. Oh, we're in London servers and I'm not. Damn. My aim is shocking. <laughs> 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 so, uh, one thing I was going to touch on uh, you have a band, a side of dubstep. Yeah. Tell me yes. more about your band. Okay, so um, I actually started off my musical journey as a guitarist. <clears throat> yeah, same. Well, drummer, but a guitarist. And I was in a band in middle school going into high school, but it was just kind of really hard to keep up with my life. But my life dream was always to do music. Yeah. So I made the dubstep thing happen, and it's like, yo, don't get me wrong. I love dubstep. I love it. But like at heart, I'll always be an emo boy. It's like so, me with drum and bass, honestly. Exactly. So um, when my schedule kind of allowed me to it's like, all right, like you did the dubstep thing, you're you're able to live comfortably, you have some extra time. I hit up my band from middle school. I was like, yo, let's let's get it started. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, so I'll drop the name. So band's called Murder of Friends. Yeah. We did a demo in your studio, actually. That's true. You did. <laughs> that happened. But I think the cool thing with this project is when I'm doing my dubstep, it's more of like me portraying my anger towards the world and the anger towards society you know yeah but with my band i get to be more vulnerable i'm like all right these are all the things i'm angry about with myself yeah and i get to touch on you know more personal topics yeah for sure it's a different kind of it's a different like music is so strange isn't it like it's like the music you write in your band is a lot more musical and a lot more soul singing and not soul singing but you know there's more soul put into into that edge of what you're trying to portray but with dubstep you just portray like because it's all written in in the form of like basses and like wumps and all that sort of stuff. The way you portray dubstep is almost like a release from how you're feeling. And the way you portray exactly. the story out of a band, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to tell you a story, please listen. It's like such a different thing, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like, I really like that I have this project to work on now because it's given me a deeper appreciation for the writing process. Mm. Because, you know, when I write dubstep, I'm not saying that dubstep can't be meaningful and deep, but it's just, I've never had that approach to it. Like, like we talked about, it's always been a release for me. <clears throat> yeah. So there'll be times where it's like, I don't really have that release and I'm kind of just frustrated about other things. So the dubstep doesn't happen, but then I can go talk about like things I'm frustrated about, you know, in my life or with myself for yeah. my band. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, you, okay, so, so what you do with Sweet Tooth is very similar to me on stage. It's very energetic, a lot of jumping around, a lot of energy, you know, portrayed into entertainment. Not just standing there and DJing and clapping like you know some some EDM artists would do, but like, was there was there any kind of influence in that? I'm not trying to say did did you copy me? I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying like, is there an influence from where that came one, from? If you if million. let's let's because you're gonna I know you're gonna say me, but if I was to say like if I was to say if I didn't exist, would you be doing it still? If I didn't if you didn't exist, I think I would still be doing it because yeah, that's I what I think. MMA. That's what I think. I but, think I think because my 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 on stage my on stage energy comes from how I was on stage in a band. So like it was it was just very natural for me to to to, to become that. But I feel like because you're a very natural uh, entertainer yourself, you probably would have been like that anyway. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like, would you have been similar to how you are now? Do you feel like, or would it have been maybe a different type of entertainer if I didn't exist? Because I know obviously you. you you know, you took inspiration from what I did for a while. Yeah, I think I think I would still have this uh, the same energy, but I feel like it would be different. Just because when you know, I've seen DJs go ham before, but never to that extent to where they're moving along with like every song at full intensity. I didn't know that was a thing. So you know, even like oh, it's one on me. Hold on, yeah, yeah. One here, one left side as well. Keep on your left, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're down. Knocked one. 
Yeah, so I, I kind of think about that too. I was like, yo, if I never saw James, I wonder how my energy would be. Because, like, I feel like I'm just a very energetic person and that yeah. kind of translates into everything I do. Yeah, that's why I think that you would be like that, even if I wasn't around to give you that sort of inspiration to be kind of like that on stage. But, but it's just hard to, like, kind of... Uh, it's hard. It's hard to put into perspective because, like, seeing you for the first time was really just that holy, sh like, holy crap moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, like... yeah. It's weird to think that. It's weird to think that people saw me and went, "Whoa!" <laughs> if that even makes any sense. I remember one time. It was. It wasn't the first time I saw you. It's because the first time I saw you, like, I knew 50 caliber. I knew Gorilla Flex. I knew like so vexed. Yeah. But I wasn't like a full Funk Case fan yet. You know, it was kind of like, all right, if like. Fun cases on the lineup, cookies on the lineup, Dr. P flux. I'm like, all right, that's a great dubstep show. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm more into like Palladium you know, though. Is that the is that the Palladium show you're you're that alluding the to? There. Yeah, yeah. Show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but when I went to that show, that's when I became like a full like, all right, dubstep's my thing. I'm a fan, like I'm a circus fan. And I remember seeing you uh maybe like a year or two after at San uh, what's it called? Santa Ana, the observatory. Santa yeah, yeah, yeah. Observatory is an amazing venue. And I had this moment when you were loading up the decks, I was like, whoa, like, this is him. Like, this is Fun Case. This is the guy. The and guy. that was even a little bit before I started DJing. Seriously, God, there's a guy behind us. I'm trying to flank him. I don't know where they but are. But I remember seeing, like, the way I felt watching you load up. I was like, man, this is the guy. Like, this is Fun Case. Like, this is why I do this. I was like, yo, I want someone to feel about me, like, when I'm getting ready to play a show. You yeah. Know? That's similar to how I felt actually when I when I started off. Well, honestly, when I, when I used to watch uh, I used to watch videos of Stenchman playing live, and I used to and I used to see people on his Facebook being like, "Yo, you're my idol," and I was like, "Dude, I want to be someone's idol." <laughs> yeah. Literally, like. And I remember for me, I was like, I want to be the reason someone starts DJing. Yeah. And then when I had that first encounter, like, "Yo, like you're the reason I got into this," I was like, "Whoa, it happened." I need to play this more, dude, and get better. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, th I think, I think your 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 natural energy probably would have would have been to entertain on stage, but in the way you do, you do. But the thing is, you don't you don't copy me. You have your own. You have your knees up, like <laughs> like jumping around all crazy. I definitely used the fun case, uh, you know, blueprint. <laughs> yeah. But my thing too, it was just kind of more so like I could learn. You know, I took I took elements of what I really liked about you. It's like, all right. Not only do you have a lot of energy, but you're also, your musicality is just unmatched, you mm. know? Every move that you do makes sense. And you move along to like the weird intricate, intricate patterns that happen in the songs. So it's like, I can do that and be like, you know, you, but I also wanted to make it very clear. I'm like, yo, I'm doing my own dance moves. Yeah. And when people see things from a sweet tooth sense, like, all right, like that's a sweet tooth signature right there, you know? Yeah, for sure. Knees up. Knees up is my, uh, my, no, my know of. For your style. Knees up. Knees up. Back and forth. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I'm literally the worst aiming issue. Let's go. Oh, actually, no. I've done a hell of a damage on the guy over here. Frig. I've been silenced as well. For not good. Kind of need my Mirage here. I got eyes on the guy that silenced you. 60 on him. It's all good. I should be fine here, I think. I'm just about to come back. Me? He's gonna be chasing me, I think, so I'm just gonna wait for him. He's gonna turn up here in a second. Oh, there's one up there. She missed completely. Oh my god. One there. I don't know if. I'm gonna stay here, I think. Sort of yeah, I see one right here. I haven't really got a good shot on him with this uh, gun. I'm trying to get a bit closer for it. Oh, they spotted me in this doorway. There's a guy in this doorway. I'm, to reload. Uh, I got <laughs> Yep. On your body? Uh, there's one right here. She's weak, but she's going to pop a Phoenix kit. Oh, yeah, I see her. No, you have to be joking my existence, dude. You have to be joking. How much damage did I act? 492 damage. Dude. She got, the, she got the Phoenix kit off right when you were about to kill her. 492, dude. Oh, my Lord. 
That's absolutely crazy. So where has been uh, your where has been your most before like dubstep? Where was kind of your most? What was your biggest I I aspiration when you got into dubstep and you started doing well for yourself? What was the biggest aspiration for you when you know was it touring? Was it having music on certain platforms? Was it having certain DJs play your music? What was your biggest aspiration? Uh, I think it's a little bit of all of those things, but the, I guess to answer your question, the biggest aspiration was to be able to do this and live comfortably. Yeah. Live comfortably and be able to create opportunities for, you know, my current family, any future family I have, and be able to like use my platform to bring up other artists that are trying to make the same dream happen. Are you going to try and but, start a label or something anytime? Uh, possibly. Like I've, I've thought about it, but just running a label is just kind of like its own nightmare yes that's why i have a team do it for me <laughs> i don't want to do that stuff it's, it's a lot of work but is there is there uh is there a reason for the name sweet tooth oh yeah so um i don't even know if i know this actually yeah so i was at my first rave uh 10 years ago we're gonna do regular have... regular duos by the way okay cool I was at my first rave and I had a lot of uh, cough cough candy that night. So yes. the name Sweet Tooth, <laughs> the name Sweet Tooth kind of stuck. From that, is it really? No way. That's crazy. Yeah. Very short, very short story there. <laughs> if you, if you, uh, if you were given the opportunity to switch your name with no repercussion, like you would just go as normal, everyone knew your new name, like it's like Sweet Tooth never existed, it just carries on as normal. Would you change your name? Uh, I, I wouldn't because the name Sweet Tooth didn't really start for me as like my artist name. It was kind of more, I went through this whole transition where it's like, I realized all the things I didn't like about myself. I realized why I was so unhappy with myself. Right. So that all happened around the time that I went to my first rave and that's when I became Sweet Tooth. Right. So like Sweet Tooth for me was this whole evolutionary period of my life. So it's not just, you know, my artist name. It's just kind of like, it was a period of time, you know, it's like, I've been Sweet Tooth since 2010, and that's when my life actually, you know, started. Yeah. So it's like the name, the name's kind of special to me. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't think I changed mine. I think mine's too weird. <laughs> I think you can, if you can Google it and it comes up with your name, then I'm good to go. That's the, that's my. Uh, I definitely my thought about that from that perspective. I'm like, man, especially too now because. Um, Not like Google know, my name. I'm just saying, if I had to Google my name, I would come up with my my results instead of like something else. Yeah, because I've been tagged in bakeries, candy stores. Yeah, you can imagine. And then now there's a very popular comic, which is becoming a Netflix show. You know, like, so which is called Sweet Tooth. So I'm going to be fighting for engagement with that. <laughs> That'll be fun. Good on you. Let's go this way. Is there, um, so talking of uh, early Devon, early Sweet Tooth, what artists were your favorite back in the day? Dubstep. Uh, dubstep. Okay, so... What's like? What was like the top three of your, you know, wow artists at the time? Early days, I'd say you, Cookie Zombie. Right. Easily. Because my first experience with dubstep was actually, I ended up finding out later, but Al Ross's brother, uh, Drooly. Right. <laughs> that, was a, that was the first dubstep song I ever heard. But as far as like, all right, this is my favorite genre, and then becoming like, all right, this is what I want to do for a living. Yeah. It was you, Cook, and Zomboy. Okay, interesting. And hands down. How 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 early Zomboy Zomboy are we talking? Like, are we talking early Zomboy or are we talking, talking early Zomboy? Like or like a bitch. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't mean. Yeah, I'm talking about like EDC 2012 Sunday. Me hearing him play Sunlight for the first time, or his Sunlight remix for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mean. Is any? Do you think anything from from today um, is born from any of those artists you mentioned, or like, like Zomboy, for instance, or Cookie? I'd have to say, like, I, I don't know. I may be biased in saying this, but like, I think it's a hundred percent from those days. Yeah. Because there's a lot of new artists now, and dubstep has been around for long enough to where people aren't really doing their research anymore. Yeah. But even if you take the newest artists and they were to say like. You know, one of the, somebody from three years ago, or someone that was famous, really famous three years ago, is their inspiration. You ask them who their inspiration, they're gonna say someone that I said. You know. Yeah. Probably. So it's like all the biggest artists that are coming up right now that are you know the youngins, 
their idols are the same idols that I had. So it's like, I personally believe that 100% that 2012 breakout year was, is the credit for what Dubstep is doing right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's smoke them. It's weird. How, have you been producing for very long? Uh, no. So it's funny that you brought up Yaks as your first. Oh, right. Yeah. I was specifically just a DJ. I just, I don't know. I just never really gave production a chance. Yeah. And I started building a name for myself from being, you know, a good live DJ. But then one day Yaks randomly called me. He's like, hey, what are you doing? Come to my house right now. I'm teaching you how to produce. Right now. <laughs> yes. So that was uh, early, early 2017. So yeah, I guess I have been producing for like four-ish years. Yeah. But to me, in the grand scale of my career, it doesn't feel like I've been producing that long. And what's your go-to DAW? For anyone who doesn't know what that means, that's like the, the music making software. Oh, Reason. Like, just go to Reason. Are you just pure Reason? Pure Reason. Uh, there's been times where I've done my post-processing in Logic just because you can slam the limiter in there and, like, you won't be, like, clipping because, you know, it has the auto, you know, the auto yeah. clipper in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I like going to Logic to make songs loud without repercussion. Yeah, I think we all do. Doesn't really work out that easily, but <laughs> we, I like it. Um, is there anything different you're thinking of doing for, for say, you know, towards the end of 2021, start of 22, that people might not expect as Sweet Tooth fans? Anything different you're going to try and do, or are you just going to run with what you got, trying to hone your craft, anything specific? Or I think the biggest thing that I've been meditating on is, you know, we talked about the band earlier. Hmm. At first, I was dead set on keeping my band, or, you know, my, uh, my rock side and my dubstep side separate. Yeah. But... My biggest interest now is finding a way to culminate those two parts of me, you know, and make it sound natural and not. I think that makes total sense, honestly. Especially because since you're the singer, do you know how hard it is for people to, people to find singers? You could sing your own songs. That'd be crazy. Yeah, there, there's just a part of me that felt like those two, you know, there's two different halves of me. I felt like those are two halves that would never, that would never mix. Yeah. But I've talked to some friends about it. And it's like, no, you just, you just kind of have to do it and then it'll, you know. Yeah, you'll get comfortable two, with it. I have to get comfortable with it because I feel like myself, there's just so much expectation expectation of what I want to hear out of a dubstep slash rock song. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That if I don't do it, or since I wasn't able to do exactly what I wanted to with it off the bat, I got kind of discouraged. But now I really want to sit down and make that happen. I think that's a, a big problem with with making music. Like like you'll get an idea in your head and you'll get like like a like a base like a sound design base. Like for instance, you'll be like whoa in your head and you're like whoa i need to go home and make that right now i have such a good riff for it and you go home you don't make anything close to it i mean not that exact noise obviously you know the different noises but yeah. uh people are always like yeah i want to go home and make that noise and some people have the ability to do it i don't and uh i, I remember just thinking like how am i going to make it end up if i can't even just make a noise in you know that i had in my head and do what i wanted to do with it but you find such a it's such a weird thing where you just kind of evolve into your own sound you don't plan on and then that becomes your thing. Because I think you've got that barking bass if you, you've used yeah. in, in tracks like Impending Doom, which is uh, out on, uh, on DPMO. That's kind of his, uh, his hit that really brought him up into the scene. But there's a bass in there. It like, sounds like a barking dog, and that's very sweet tooth to me. I'm assuming that, that bass just came around from you probably messing around with like the noises and stuff? or Messing around with Maelstrom because uh, David Yax taught me how to do a couple of things. Mm. So when I went home, you know, I kind of just did what he told me to do, but then kind of worked on it more and made it my own. And that's how that barking bass came to be. Yeah. And then once uh, Impending Doom saw its success, I was like, okay, if there's something with this sound. Let me just evolve this. Yeah, you definitely should be honing, like, something you've nailed, like that noise. You should definitely be doing versions of it, different versions of it. And also re not reusing, but like kind of like recycling that sound, making different versions of it. Because that's what you'll 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 find a signature sound essentially, and that's something that yeah, not everyone has really. I remember one time I was sitting down thinking that exact same kind of thing. I was like, all right, like I need to have a signature sound. Yeah. So one of my more popular songs, Sadist, that was kind of my most recognizable like tune. You know, that synth sounds like me and nobody else. So I was like, okay, that Sadist synth is gonna be my um, that's gonna be my signature sound. And yeah. every time I use that synth, I was like, this is just Sadist VIP VIP VIP. <laughs> Yeah. So Ooh, one 70. day I sat down. And... <laughs> Wait, what? Oof! No, I clapped someone for seventy using the sentinel. 
Ooh, where's that coming yeah, from? Yeah, so one day I sat down, uh, 45 down here. One day I sat down and reprocessed that synth, and that's how your oh, Renate came to be. There. 63 in doorway. There's one also on this rock right here. I think it's a teammate. Down below? Oh, I'll keep an eye on you. I don't think they got. I'm gonna move across so the guy at the doorway doesn't be able to shoot at me. Oh yeah, yeah, behind, uh, right here, right here. They're actually running away from you. All right, yeah, I see him now. Ah, uh, rooftop, rooftop. Oof, two on rooftop here. Oh, I thought I had it. I thought I had it. I will get a good shot on this damn, on this damn show I'm doing. Oh, come on. I'm gonna flank him. Right, there's one on this roof here. There's no one on the roof anymore. It's on the middle. Oh, come on. That must be so close. Oh, 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 oh. I'm getting shot from behind. I'm getting shot from behind. I'm dead. Another team. Another team for sure. We're getting the sandwiched in. Unless he, unless he flanked me. I don't know. I should have known I shouldn't be playing. I shouldn't be playing a, a, a battle royale and just shooting on, on a rock without someone coming towards me and killing me. <laughs> Okay, there's no way. Kick it up. There we so go. So he was uh he was right on my body, and I think he ran backwards. So he might be around here somewhere. It might have been the guy that I was shooting at before. He might... It's the guy. Uh, footsteps I just heard. Yep. <laughs> it just instantaneous death. <laughs> yeah, I'd have been like that. That's apex for you. That's apex for you. Free. Oh man. I need to play this more for sure. That new arena mode is pretty cool. Though. Let's do that again. Let's give that a go. Um, yeah, arenas too. It's way more forgiving, and it um, it helps you. What's it called? It helps you get your shots. Yeah. Have you um, have you got any uh, any collabs that you'd love to do? Someone oh, said, yeah. "Who do you want to collab with? I'll get you them tomorrow." Who's your collab go to? Jake's. Yeah, well, I mean that could that could happen anyway. <laughs> so. Well, it's, it's one of those things we talked about it. And we talked about it in person because he was playing on Pending Doom. Yeah. Um. And I was like, "Hey, me, you, and Level should do a tune." He's like, "Nah, man. Me and you should do a tune." And I was like, "Oh, let's go." Anyone but, else yeah, apart from Jake's? Uh, I mean, there's you, obviously. I just, I think I want to do one with Yax. I know me, Yax, and Murata just did one. That's like a dream come true in itself. Yeah. Is but there I anyone? Do one. Is there anyone like outside of dubstep? If someone said oh, you can okay. have anyone. Oliver Tree, Tom DeLong, easily. Um, For those who don't know, Tom DeLong is Blink-182. What's it called? Oh, biggest one, biggest one by far. Robert Smith from The Cure. If oh, I okay. could do a tune with Robert Smith, that would just, that's my life right there. Yeah. That'd be cool. And I think besides Tom DeLong, like any existing, or any former existing member of Blink-182, because that would just mean like my whole music journey came full circle. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I think like, uh, here's a good question. Do you think there's anyone in dubstep who has made such a massive footprint in how dubstep sounds, but hasn't been recognized for it? Because, you know, we talk about people like Skrillex. Obviously, Skrillex deserves all the mentions on the planet because he brought that label, that, that genre from from underground to straight to the radios to Grammys, like he he changed the game and he brought this this genre into the mainstream. But is there anyone that you think that had a huge impact on the scene, but doesn't get any recognition, or maybe gets a little recognition, deserves more? Ominous, one hundred percent. I think ominous, yeah, yeah. Because like you know, you look at ominous. He is on festivals, he is on lineups, but just how versatile he is, how how many people just blown up from biting his sound do you have to ready up by the way oh yeah sorry <laughs> i was like why are we getting in the game i got used to cod <laughs> where you don't have oh, to okay, yeah, yeah. yeah but there's just so many people that have become you know known off being ominous clones and it's like you look at ominous he's just not getting those really high festival placements yeah i think it's pretty unfair he does but he gets i think inside of dubstep ominous gets a lot of recognition I don't think he gets the recognition he deserves, though, in in a in a grander scale on the in this genre. He definitely but, does get a lot of respect, but I don't think he gets the opportunities he deserves. Yeah. Okay, let's let's say tomorrow, Sweet Tooth label exists. Who's the first three artists you're going to? I'm going to Sisto. 
for sure. Yeah. Jaqui and Chromatic. Some good names there. I don't know too much about Sisto, but I know Jaqui and Chromatic. And uh, yeah, some good talents. There, there's so, dude, there's, we are in such, okay, here's a, here's a conversation. I was talking to uh, Yaks about this, and this is the problem. It's like a good problem to have, but not with today's music and today's dubstep scene, which is, it's easier than ever for someone to get their music to their favorite artists. Let's say anyone wants to go out to Excision and be like, hey, can you listen to my music? There's an email. Like, that was never the case back in the day. Like, it was really hard to get your music out there. And to get signed to labels, like, all, all that sort of stuff. But I think in these in this day and age, it's so easy to get your music out there. That's the problem. Does that make sense? Like, there's so many avenues out now, out now that everyone is fighting everyone to be noticed because they're so, it's so easy to get noticed now. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes 100% sense. I think and that I think that it's, it's just such a like music was cutthroat in the sense that if you got signed you had to be consistent to stay in the label you were signed to or anything like that. But now it's like cutthroat in the sense of like if you're not good enough you'll get replaced real quick by someone else who's new on the scene kind of thing. Like, and the thing is too like not only is it easier to get your music <laughs> your music out there, but it's easier to learn how to become a producer because back in the day there wasn't YouTube you know there wasn't Patreon there wasn't all these limitless sources to learn how to use your DAW. And now, like, there's all these tools to help people, like, anyone can become a producer now. And it's a great thing. I'm glad that, you know, the tools are there. But it also makes it very hard to stand out. Okay, there's, I downed one, and there's, uh, on the right side, there's a sniper at the very end. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a really, it's a really awkward time because it, having your music being discovered so easy is like a dream for anyone. But to have it, to have so many people have the same thing, just means that w how are you going to stand out in a scene so rich of new talent? You know, like how does that work? And it's like, oh, I'm dead. No one really, no one really knows. Yeah, like, exactly. No really, each tune is different. You know, like you, there are people that are like, all right, this is my best tune, and then a tune that they hate is the one that blows them up. And it's like, there's teams, there's tunes that come out on their dream labels that don't do as much for them as like some random kid they've never met doing a dance on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... I think that's also just, a problem as well as TikTok is, TikTok is blowing, I think, I think I could be, I could be very harsh in saying this. I think TikTok is blowing up the wrong music. To an extent. I can I can agree with that because I think the thing everyone goes on TikTok to just digest and veg out yeah. and kind of like have a quick laugh. Yeah. So you have something that you don't really have to listen to, give much thought to, you don't have to digest and it's catchy, it's simple. So it's just kind of like, and then you hear it a lot and it's just kind of like, oh yeah, it's going to blow up. Yeah. Oh man. If you say it, let's, um, like all the backyardigan songs coming up out of nowhere again. Yeah. Oh, it's strange, isn't it? It's strange how TikTok works. I miss Vine. I can't lie. I miss Vine. I think TikTok is too technical and uh, the videos are a bit too long. Although, I've never been a big TikToker. Like, there's, they're all in the back here. I've never been a massive TikToker. I was always I was always a big Vine guy, but um, I think TikTok's too long. I think the... Oh, they're all here. What the hell? And I think it kind of goes back to what you were saying, too, about, like... You know, to make it in Vine, you kind of had to be funny, consistently funny. Yeah. And now with TikTok, it's kind of like, all right, just hit the right algorithm. Yeah, I mean, you, you do one good one, and it's you can just pump them out from there on. I don't think Vine was ever like that, quite honestly. Oh! I got Longboat in the face. I think I hear someone pushing. But it's kind of crazy now, too, to, to be in a world where it's like, you know, you look how TikTok was received a couple months ago, and it's like, all right, like, this is just not a serious platform. Don't pay any attention. Like, you know, it's like, don't take it seriously. Yeah, I did not and think it was going to do as well as it did, quite honestly. Okay, right here. You need, you need a TikTok hit. Like, you need to get this song on TikTok. Yes, down. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I'm doing okay this round, but, oh, man. Just not killing it enough. It's not killing it enough at all. 
Um, have you? Uh, what countries have you not been to on tour yet? What countries have you want to be want to be going to, but you've not been to yet? I want to play Germany. I want to play France. Oh yeah, France for sure. Yeah, you should definitely do France. I want to do China, Japan. Uh, I feel like <laughs> South America would be cool. Like it'd be cool to actually come to Brazil. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to go to Brazil. Brazil, Brazil kind of scares me though. Like I've heard a lot of, you know, it's quite, it's quite a scary place, as well as a very beautiful place, obviously. But I do hear a lot of stories about, you know, people getting mugged in Brazil and stuff. But I mean, I mean you could say that about anywhere, honestly. You could say that about I, I think anywhere. The same with like, you know, like with New York or LA, it's like, all right, stay in the tourist destinations and you'll be fine. Yeah, I think so. But then people might warn you away from that idea too, because it's a, it's an obvious hotspot for people. I don't know. It can it can differ. I mean, I've grown up in a very nice part of England, and there's still rough areas. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of tough to say. But but I think my dream venue like internationally Damn. is definitely Boots House. Oh Germany, yeah, yeah, Boots House. I mean, what about uh, you? You missed out on playing in Chinese Laundry in Sydney. Now it's closed down. Yeah, I know. And the the real kicker is I was set oh, to headline that exact venue the next week. <laughs> Damn, that's pain. Let's go. Good hit. Oh, I see him. You got eyes on him? Yeah, he's right over here. Although he's no, he's here, he's here, he's here. I just yeah, hit him with my with my ult. Hit him for 29 flesh, he's weak, pushing up. Yeah, okay, he's back in. Ooh, he's got a sniper though, you can push him. Let's go! Nice. He collapsed. <laughs> um... Oh man. Oh man, music is crazy. Have you have you thought about doing more guitars in your music though? Because yeah, I know, you, I know obviously you play guitar and that's your go-to uh, weapon, as, as, as to say, but... Have you not thought about doing more guitar in your music or anything, or...? I've thought about it, and then it kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier. I want to find a way to, I think my dream as, you know, a musician is to find a way to seamlessly integrate, like, punk and hardcore mm. into, you know, the EDM world. Yeah. And I've heard people integrate metal, you know, like, you're, uh, you know, like, heavy chugs, kind of yeah. like gent stuff. Sullivan King, phase one, like, ice like that. And then, you know, on the lower scale, you have, like, Agony and, uh, I wouldn't say Marauder is lower, but you know, I guess like on an angrier scale. Yeah, definitely an angrier scale. Yeah, so you have them integrating it. <coughs> Sorry, with tear out seamlessly because it's like I've always considered tear out the metal of dubstep. Yeah, for sure. But you know, I'm not a tear out producer. Like I feel like all my stuff, even my heavier stuff, is kind of driven by bounce. And as a punk emo guitarist, like punk and emo, it's not bouncy. So Ooh, kind of sad that was a lot of damage. I'll just say. How do I make these two things work together? I just took a lot of damage. I think he's gonna push me here. Yep, yeah, yeah, he's right here on me. One tap. On my body. On the box. Oh, Grand Swiss, come on, come on, Grand Swiss! I believe. Oh, he's got the, he's got the, he's got the pistol out. Is he gonna do it? Oh, the guy's punching. I don't think he has any ammo. Okay, that's one down. Nice. Yeah, this really game mode's fun. Yeah, I love. Oh, here he is. What other games do you play apart from Apex? Anyway, what's your go-to games? Uh, go-to games: Knockout City, Apex, uh, COD. But I only like playing Resurgence. Right yeah. Uh, when he says COD, he means Call of Duty, by the way, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone's going, why does he keep saying COD? Is he talking about fish? He likes playing fish. <laughs> yeah, Call of Duty was from the Battle Royale, but the Resurgence mode. <laughs> yeah. I don't play enough Warzone either, honestly. I probably should. But the thing about Warzone is they just change the meta so much. Like, they'll, they'll debut a new gun and they'll make it to the point where the game is unplayable because of this gun. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, there's been so many. 
So many. D was it DMR was one of them at one point? The DMR was the worst one. It's like you literally had a <laughs> two taps. Auto, or a auto sniper. Yeah. Victory like, back Really fun. And then they'll just bring in this gun that just breaks the meta. It's like, okay, if I don't use this gun, I'm not going to be able to win, but I don't want to use the same loadout as everybody else. Yeah, for sure. I don't even find anyone here. They're trying to play Outriders again, which is essentially Gears of War Destiny, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw you playing that. I'm, I'm any, I haven't actually... Uh, I haven't actually went to go get that game. It looks fun, but... I don't know. Oh, they're on, yeah, they're on top roof here. Top roof. What ended up happening with that game is since it wasn't a live service game, it had a lot of problems. Yeah. That just didn't get fixed. And there was a very loyal community like, all right, like, we'll still... It's still a very fun game. Like, we'll still play it. They just like help us with these problems but instead of fixing the problems they just created oh my god lord you got annihilated oh i'm getting annihilated too holy moly i think i got double uh oh, i'm for sure finished here i'm for sure dead here They had, they had a good flank there. I couldn't really get away from it. I peeked once and got double charge right there. Really? Come on, come on, come on. We got this, we got this. I believe. Okay, let me see if I can get. Oh, I've only got syringes. Oh, I didn't buy anything else. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. <laughs> Have you um have you got any uh any tracks coming out soon that everyone should be t keeping an eye on? Uh, I have a collab with Point Blank that should be coming out soon. I'm not sure on the exact date, but that one's down to Tom. Uh, where's so that coming from? I uh, believe it's going to be coming out on Rampage. Rampage. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what Rampage is, that is a uh, a, a Belgian record label which is kind of named after the massive event, which, funny enough. Sweet Tooth will be playing in towards the year. end of this year in, in December. Yes, yes. So it's a massive, it's a 15,000 person arena in Antwerp uh, called Sport Palais. Um, I've played it almost every single year. <laughs> I keep, the crowds keep asking for you back, which is a good thing, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's a huge event. They have their own, um, they have their own uh, record label now. So to, to help out the, uh, the, the new guys and kind of showcase all the new talents. But yeah, it's, it's good stuff. And Devon has his own, Mr. Sweet Tooth has his own track on there with Point Blank, who is also another piece of uh, Deepmo family. Had a track out on Deepmo 3 with uh, with uh, Bomber called Bust the Beat. Oh, that was one of my favorite ones. So yeah, very, very cool track. Very old school style. So yeah, lots to look out for. Well, we got to win this, dude. We got to win this. I accept nothing but wins here. I've gone for the Shen Sentinel this time instead of a charge rifle. Sure, I'll stick with you this time. I'm gonna peek here. Yo, got us some material. Yeah, they're taking the zip line up top. We're gonna reposition to right here. Okay, I'm gonna go through the middle here. I saw someone, and I don't think they're selling cookies. Oh my god, dude. Bro, there's no way he had eyes on me. Uh, There's one on the roof right here. Oh, did you get downed already? I got long mode in the face. He's gonna drop me, I know it. I hear him above me here. Okay, one on the zipline here. We're, uh, we're One down here with me. Oh my lord! How does he know I was here? L Jesus! Am I playing against Shroud? I'll just die to the uh, outside. Playing against Shroud, I swear to God. Yeah, okay, I definitely feel the ping. <laughs> I definitely feel like I'm not good at this game. Oh man. Have you got any um, any up and coming artists that you really want to push? Oh yeah, okay. So we got Soundwreck, 
Izadi, Jamos, Siren, Cisco, Syndra. Those are the names like just off the top. A lot of S's. A lot of S's. <laughs> maybe that's the key to modern dubstep. Yeah, maybe. Sweet Tooth, Sisto. Oh. <laughs> it's correct. Also, I just found out about these two kids from Australia, uh, Knots and Flanders. I've been playing them out a lot. All right, interesting. So they're uh. in game. Oh man. Well, that's the end of that. <laughs> Our hour is up, and uh, I didn't cover myself in glory, let's put it that way, but hey, I don't play this game very often. This isn't about how good I am in games, it's about playing, just playing some games and having a chat, but yeah, man, I wish I was better at this game. I can't lie. I should play this more often. I mean, that arena mode's cool. I want to get good at that arena mode, quite honestly. So. Let me know when you're trying to play arenas. I'm always down. Yeah, very true. All right, well, um, is there anything you want to do? Uh, give any shout outs or anything you want to let people know before we uh, before we end the show? Uh, yeah, everyone, brush your teeth. Give your parents a hug. Shout out Grocery Boys for real, though. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Grocery Boys is a collective that I'm a part of. It's a gaming slash music collective. We always kind of help each other out, push each other's streams and whatnot. But yeah, shopping carts coming up. Shout out to the DPMO fam. You already know the deal. Always, always. All right, cool. Thanks so much for uh, for joining me on this a beautiful adventure of showing us how bad I am at Apex. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks so much, Devin. And next week, we will be hosting yet again another round of Good Games presented by Funcase. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, I'll see you again next week for another round. And uh, yeah, stay golden. I'll see you guys soon. And uh, yeah, bonjour.